so far, so good. We got a corridor, an assembly, a profile, all these things we'd like to print out at some point in time to to uh, show somebody how they look. What I'd like to do is modify a few things real quick. I'm going to go to my profile view, right click on it, say edit profile view style. In this case, normally I'd make a new style, but in this case I just want to edit it. So in the information it shows us that we're editing major grids style, which is fine. And here on the graph tab, it shows us the vertical exaggeration. I'm going to scale this down to two, hit apply. Now I get a much shorter grid. That looks like I'd like it to be. Actually, let's take it down one more to one. There we go. That looks pretty good. I would like to tighten this grid up just a little bit. So I'm going to click on the grid tab. On the grid tab, I see that the grid padding right now is adding a whole extra one to the right and one to the left. I'm going to shrink, put those back down to zeros. And I'm going to leave the above and below at two just because looking over here, you can see that a little bit of space to draw more is good. I'm going to leave that alone. The title annotation is adequate. Horizontal and vertical axes are pretty good. Say OK. And then give it another review. Now look at it. Uh, it's a little bit tight over here, but let's see how it looks on the layout. With that done, oh, and also the one that I dropped down, you can see that now since I pulled it down, it thinks it's way down. I might bring it back up just a hair. That will change when I put it into a view as well. All right. With this, let's go down here to the layouts. I'm going to click a new layout. Civil 3D's default is to be an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, and I believe that's what this one is. We may have to double check it. To do so, let's go to Layout, right click on it, go to Page Setup Manager. It's going to show us that we're currently on Layout 1. I'd like to modify this one. To modify it, I'm going to set a plotter. In this case, the plotter I want to print is to the DWG to PDF. I know Civil 3D's styles seem to really like full-size pieces of paper. So in this case here, I'm going to pick an ANSI oversized architectural. Let's go... Well, let's do this one. Architectural D 36 by 24. I do that. We can see my little preview shows me 36 by 24. I'm going to do one-to-one. -one. I like to center all my stuff, so I'm going to pick on extents. The center plot lights up. And for plot style, right now, none will be adequate. It'll be fine. I'm going to say OK and close that. And now I can see that initially I had an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper there. I'm going to draw a standard D-sized border on here real quick with a polyline. That's going to be, I'm going to hit F8 to put my ortho on. It'll be 22 tall by 34 wide. 22 down, and then I'm going to hit C for close. I'm going to offset this 0.75, three quarters of an inch to give myself a little bit of a margin. And then normally I'd go in here and put a line in from this endpoint over two inches, and then come straight up to the perpendicular of this to give myself a little bit of room for a title block. Now I'm going to take my viewport. I've already got one in here. I would like to have more because I'm going to have one for my assembly, one for my profile, and one for my uh, plan view. So this is just an object in paper space. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy it three times. I'm going to move it around. Oops. <laughs> my snap was left on, so it pushed it off to the side. I'm going to hit F3, turn my snaps off. Move this back in here. Then I'm going to rearrange it a little bit. I'm going to make this one big enough to show my profile view in. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to move this one over here and make it a little more square. That's where my assembly is going to be. I'm going to zoom in on my assembly. I'm going to double click in here and zoom in on my profile. And I'm going to click on this, make this a bit larger. Turn off F8. I'm going to make this taller because what I want to do is I want to focus on this part of the road. Let's get out of here real quick. I'm going to put him back off to the side. Now that I've got this 
set to some rough idea. Here's my rough plan view, my rough profile view, my rough assembly. If I click on one of these views, down in the bottom right, I can control all the different scales. Let's pick one. Let's go with 1 to 30, see how that looks. Pretty massive. I'm going to make the box a little bigger just to see if I'm catching the edges. I am not. So let's make it 1 to 40. Better. 50. Well, let's go one more to 1 to 60 and see what that gives us. All right, right now you're looking at this going, that still looks like a mess, which is expected. So we'll, for some reason, the automatic labeling does this until you regen the image. So if I double click in this viewport and type RE for regenerate, it regens it. Now I've got a much nicer looking profile view. Now I'm going to click back out, zoom over here. Now I can see that this is pretty well packed. So it's a lot more clear than I want it to be. We'll clean that up in just a minute. Over here I see that my profile view. If I look at if I look close enough, I'll see if I can oh see right here. <laughs> it's a really bad way to look at the numbers, but they're visible, they're there. I know that the the top down follows the same as this, zero to fourteen hundred, so it's zero up here to fourteen. Just for kicks, I'm gonna pick on this, set the scale of the viewport to one to sixty. I'm gonna zoom double click in here and pan over until it kind of fits. And one nice thing is nowadays we can rotate a viewport. So I'm gonna rotate this around a base point here. I'm gonna pull up just a bit and put on F8 to snap straight up. Click there, and now I've rotated my entire view. I'm gonna move my entire view now back onto here. Let's grab this guy and shrink him down a bit because I don't want my assembly to be really gigantic. I'm going to shrink my view around it. It does two things. Cleans up a little bit and also lets me know about where he's going to end up. I can put him in there for the moment. Now I can take this viewport, make it about as big as the top one, double click in it, pan over, and now I can see that. If I double click out, you can see that my zeros here going to the end alignment. Now I've got it lined up pretty good. I like that, or at least it's good enough. Right now I can see my plan view in here still if I want to get rid of it. All I have to do is just drag it out, or drag it over. Oops, I cut off the E in my elevation. I can take this and scooch it over a notch. There we go. Now this is about what's going to print out. I'm going to scooch that over as well. And then I can move both of these. Not too shabby, and if I really feel inclined, I can drag a line from the end of this on my F8 ortho, snap it straight up, and then I can move this view from that point there to the perpendicular of this, and now just for looks, I know both my zeros start at the same place get rid of my little construction line. There's probably another way to do it, but that's the way I normally do it. With this view here, let's do a double click to zoom extents. I'm going to click inside this viewport. Down here, oops, did I click out? I did. I'm going to click inside this viewport. But down here, there's a maximize viewport button. If I click that, it brings that one viewport up to full size. Now I can pan around and move around inside here. And when I uncheck this box in just a minute, it'll go back to the same view I had without any of the pans or zooms that I'm just doing. I'm going to do a regen. See how my text gets super crazy tiny? If I do a regen here, it gets all super big. What I want to do is adjust this just a bit so it looks a little cleaner. So I'm going to click back on my view. Right click, go to edit profile view style here in the horizontal axis. The ticks are fine, the spacing is fine, but the vertical axis is a bit tight, right? Right now I look at the vertical axis, it's set to 1 every 10. Let's change that to 1 every 20. And we'll set the minor intervals to say 5. Let's see what that looks like. Hit apply. Because my I'm zoomed in at an oddball rate, you, everything shrinks down way smaller than it's going to be for real. I'm going to say OK. And by for real, I mean 
what it's going to look like in my viewport. Mm, that's close. Let's see what it does look like in the viewport. Go back down to the maximize viewport. It should now say minimize viewport. We'll click on that. This guy goes back in the view to double check. I'll do a region. I'm going to zoom over here. Now I can see that it's still spacing at every 10. That's not what I want. Let's. Hmm. Now that it's spacing at every 10, let's double click back in the viewport. Click on this, right click, go to profile view style. Let's double check vertical access and realize that I left the right button picked. So it changed the right side but not the left side. The left side controls all the overall pieces of it. So let's go back to left, change this to 20, change minor tick intervals to 5. Now I hit apply. There we go. And seeing as how I'm doing this through an active viewport is going to give me the look that I'll actually get when I print this out. Now it looks a lot cleaner. I still don't like all my little ticks being in there because I don't really need them. Let's go to display. Let's check out left access, left side, and right side. You can see how those guys are listed here. Right now the left access is the blue line that's turned on. The access title says elevation, but for the annotation major is good. That leaves my numbers on. The, the annotation minor would be little numbers inside here, which would be really cluttered. But for the left major and minor, let's turn both those off and hit apply. There we go, now it's cleaned up. Let's go back and turn on the major ticks again, so that way at least all the main numbers have a tick. There we go, it has both a line and a tick now. Me, I don't like anything on the right hand side. I'm going to leave on the right hand axis, but turn all the other right hand pieces off. Oh, but not the top piece. And as for the top axis, I'm going to do about the same thing. Turn off the annotations, major, minor, all those pieces off, leaving on only the top axis title and the top axis itself. Now, hit OK. See what we got. Oops. As you can see, if I pan in this view here and zoom, it messes up my scale. But I knew what my scale was, so. I'm going to click down here, set it back to 1 to 60, then pan over without zooming until I get my left side to show back up. So my plan view, I'm going to push it off to the side. Now double click out of the viewport. There we go. Now that looks more like what I wanted. The one thing I did do is mess up my zero lineup that I had there, but for the most part it's alright. Let's zoom into this one more time. Click into here. I'm going to click on this. Uh, start label. I'm going to grab the box of it, drag it, hit turn off F8, turn off F3 so it's not going to snap where I don't want it to. Put it here and now it generates a leader line for me and shows me that's where my start is. I know where it is but it gives me a little bit more information which is nice. Let's get outside of the box. Pan over a little bit. Here's all my other labels. My end label is doing the same thing. It's okay, but just for consistency, I'm going to click back in the viewport, click back on this, and drag it. Let's drag it over here. Ooh, yeah, let's drag it over here. Good enough. Not too shabby, eh? Alright. If we like them there, we can leave them there. If not, eh, we can always change it. Here's my assembly, here's my plan view. Now it's ready for labels. I'm going to have to label all these pieces up, minus the labels that aren't on them, and I should label the contours so I know what elevations I'm looking at. At this point, I'm just about done.